What's up, Internet? Kevin here on Tech of Tomorrow, and while Eric's busy rocking out somewhere, I'm here to bring you guys my full review on Splinter Cell Blacklist. Now, there were a lot of people that weren't entirely happy with how the last game in the series was handled, Conviction, mainly because there was a lot of reduction in stealth elements in favor of making it a lot more accessible and more action-oriented. And while they haven't removed all of the changes made in that game, there has been a lot of promises that this one gets a lot more back to the stealth basics. So the important question, of course, is how well did they live up to that promise? Now, before we start breaking down the gameplay, let's talk about visuals for a moment, as well as bring you guys the specs for those of you that are interested. Now, we're running this with MSI's GTX 780, as well as an i7-4770K overclocked to 4 gigahertz. Now, if you're interested in the complete parts list of the system we're using, you can check that out on the link below. Now, when it comes to the game's look and feel, the environmental and character texturing is pretty good. It's nothing too fantastic, but certainly not below average. One of the things that really is a high strength, though, is the lighting, which is really important in a game game like this because, well, the huge focus is hiding in the shadows. So while playing the regular campaign on a mission that has a lot of sunlight, on ultra settings we were seeing an average frames per second of 118. On high settings we were seeing an average frames per second of 131, and on medium settings we were seeing 143 and a half. So now to talk about the actual gameplay itself. Now it's clear right away that there are some moves to make it more like the original games, mainly because we do see a return of Sam's Hallmark night vision goggles. Now of course, some of the additions that were made in Conviction have stayed, although they are still very relevant to the stealth feel. These include the ability to mark multiple targets to execute them quickly, although you have to earn the right to first with regular kills, and the ability to see a ghostly layout of yourself for where enemies saw you last. Now we're also seeing the return of some other mechanics that were left out in Conviction that definitely help make the game a lot more stealth focused, such as the ability to hide bodies of enemies, so patrol don't get alerted. Now, while stealth is much more of an option in this game than it was in Conviction, the game still gives you the option to play it like a third-person shooter, and in fact, each level ranks your performance based on three different tracks. You get rankings for your performance as a ghost, which means you're avoiding enemy encounters or using a non-lethal means of subduing them, Panther, for those of you that still want to use stealth but don't mind a little wet work in actually killing your enemies, and last but not least, there's Soldier, which is for those of you that want to treat this like a third-person shooter and just unleash a hail of bullets on everything. Now, missions in this game are in an episodic manner, and before each one, you're given a briefing period where you're told which of the three styles will fit most, giving you an idea of what kind of equipment you should bring. So, for instance, if it's a ghost-style mission, you should bring sleeping grenades so you don't kill anyone, or a soldier-style mission where you just wear heavy body armor and shoot everything apart with assault rifles. While you're free to use whatever loadout you like, there are some missions that show a very clear preference for one style or another, and you can make the game a lot harder on yourself by not being properly prepared. For instance, either being really easily noticeable in missions that instantly fail when you're discovered, and missions where combat is more or less completely unavoidable, and it only takes a couple of bullets to take you down. Now this point really strikes home in the game's side missions, which serve as both a way to give you extra experience and a way to play co-op with friends. Each of the missions is very focused on just one method or the other, and they're actually some of my favorite ones because they really have the most consistent objectives, especially the stealth missions where as soon as you're caught, the mission ends. Now, as I said, these side missions can be done in solo or co-op, and co-op really does make them a lot easier. Not just the combat-oriented ones where you have extra firepower thanks to a buddy, but even the stealth ones where you can work together to distract enemies or make use of unique routes because you need to work together to reach high ledges or breach doors. So overall, as far as gameplay is concerned, while you can still play the game like a straight-up third-person shooter, you benefit a lot from making sure to use stealth tactics and careful planning. So overall, stealth is a lot more rewarding than it was in Conviction, especially on higher difficulties. Now, as for what plot the game has, it's not the most original. It's pretty run-of-the-mill as far as the different kind of military espionage storylines go. It's not too intriguing, but it is enough to keep you going through missions. It's also really jarring to hear the change in voice actors in this one, especially because he just sounds so young. You got something to say, say it. Admittedly, it is something you get used to over time, but in the end, it still just doesn't feel the same without Michael Ironside. Now, one of my most favorite things about Blacklist, however, is the fact that it now features the return of the Spies vs. Mercs multiplayer mode, which is something I honestly never really tried in the older games and now completely regret it. Now, for those of you that haven't played this mode before, the traditional modes have you divided into two asymmetrical teams. On the one hand, you have the mercenaries. They're slow moving, heavily armored, they play in a first person view so they have better long range shots but don't see as much around them directly, and they have a much more reliable on lethal methods like assault rifles and grenades. And on the other hand, you have the spies, who still play the game in the traditional third-person mode of Splinter Cell, giving them a lot more awareness of their surroundings. They also have the ability to make use of exclusive routes and levels, such as using ductwork or climbing really high ledges. Now, they don't have as many offensive weapons, but they do have a lot of ways to distract enemies, like smoke grenades and flashbangs, and can perform an instant kill in melee if they get the chance. Now, while there is a deathmatch mode that allows for mixed teams to just shoot the crap out of each other, the multiplayer really shines a lot more when you play in the traditional modes, which more objective-based and have teams focused on just one or the other playstyle. 
One of the really hard things to do in asymmetric games is making sure that both sides are balanced, and this is where Blacklist does an excellent job. I do feel like mercs have an easier time early on when they're a lot easier to learn, but once you get into higher levels and people start learning how to play spies right, it gets a lot more balanced and a lot more interesting. Overall, Splinter Cell Blacklist is a great stealth game. The main campaign is a little on the short side, but it's supplemented by being able to do the side missions, as well as the spies versus merc mode, which is a welcome break from usual multiplayer games, and actually rewards good stealth gameplay in a multiplayer environment. Environment. There's also a good bit of replayability in the campaign if you're the kind of person that wants to get all the different little hidden collectibles or just clear it on the highest difficulty settings. Not to mention that any money you make in it can still be used to upgrade your character in multiplayer. With how few stealth games we see coming out these days, especially this year, Splinter Cell Blacklist is a welcome return to the older Splinter Cell formula, and is definitely worth playing not just for fans of the series, but just fans of the overall genre looking for something new to pick up. So there's our review of Splinter Cell Blacklist. If you guys have played the game yourself, make sure to let me know what you think in the comments. And if you haven't gotten it yet, make Make sure to check out the link in our description for pricing and availability. While you're down there, if you're interested, you can also check out the full parts list of what system we're running it on. Aside from that, if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to make Buddy happy, make sure to hit that like button. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to go ahead and click on my computer right here so you can do so to stay up to date on all of our latest vids. Till then, I'm Kevin for Tech of Tomorrow, and I'll catch you guys later.